Good morning and welcome to St. Matthew's Episcopal Church for our celebration of the second Sunday after the Epiphany. And I want to extend a special welcome to those who are joining us online as we broadcast on the internet as well. Uh, I'm Reverend Jason Wells. I'm so glad to be here for uh, my first Sunday with you. Oh. Uh, as your priest in charge. Um, I'm very excited to be here and I want to um, uh, just point out uh, my gratitude for the uh, presence and support of my wife Courtney and my daughter Lydia, who many of you know. Um, uh, you may not have seen them much over the past two years for some reason I can't really think of right now. <laughs> As we begin our worship service this morning, we turn to page 355 in the red prayer book in your pew. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings from Holy Scripture. I bring good news. There are only 63 days left until spring. <laughs> the first reading this morning is from 1 Corinthians. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit to another, faith by the same Spirit, to another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, the discernment of spirits, to another, various kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one 
individually, just as the Spirit chooses. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. And the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Almighty God, we ask that you open these words to our hearts and open our hearts to receive your word. And this we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. This is our season after the Epiphany. Last Sunday, you all celebrated the baptism of Christ, which is the first Sunday of the Epiphany. January 6th is the day of Epiphany, the day that we would remember and celebrate the three kings, three wise men, three magi coming to Jesus and his mother to present gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And I've often preached on that word epiphany, of what does that even mean? Because it's a Greek word filtered down through centuries to us. And I use the same trick lots of preachers do, which is I say, epiphany means manifestation. And I think that by saying something, I've said something meaningful. Epiphany <laughs> means manifestation. I feel somehow as though I... Uh, explained a four-letter word, by, or four-syllable word, by telling you a five-syllable word, then I then don't explain. Right? I, that just saying epiphany means manifestation always makes me feel like I have just begged the question and tried to get myself off the hook as a preacher uh, to not say a whole lot. But I had a couple of years ago an appreciation that came to me about that word manifestation. And what is it about? Because we just read in the scriptures, we heard in 1 Corinthians 12, 7, uh, this word, the, phrase, the sentence from Paul writing to the Christians in Corinth. And Paul has said, to everyone, to each person, is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To each person is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common 
good. And I remember a couple of years ago, Courtney and Lydia and I had taken a trip up to Montreal. And we're wandering around the streets of Montreal, and there are, as you know, in the middle of a city, you know, every lamppost has you know, stickers on it and half peeled off stickers removed, and there's posters and things about concerts and stuff going on on them. And I stopped because one caught my eye, and it said, and I'm not going to try to pronounce French, I'm not going to do that to you. It said in big letters, manifestation on it. And there were, you know, down at the bottom, dates, times, places where a manifestation was going to happen. And the whole sign that was there said, manifestation contra racism. Come to this place, this park, this time, this day, there will be a manifestation against racism. It was a protest. It was a demonstration. People were getting up to make Montreal a place that was going to stand up against racism. I don't know why that poster was there. I don't know what prompted if there was an issue or something that had happened a couple of years ago. But a manifestation was a showing up. And it wasn't just a showing up. It was a showing up of a lot of people who said, we want to see a different kind of Montreal. We want to see a different kind of world around us. It was a showing up and a manifestation for the common good, right? That Montreal was going to be a more, it, it was going to be a better Montreal for having shown up and manifesting against racism. There was going to be a common good brought about by doing this. And so Paul says, Ev- to everyone is given a manifestation of the Spirit, something inside of us that is going to show up. God will show up in us for the common good. And he goes on to name some of those ways, right? The spirit will be manifest with knowledge, with wisdom, with healing, with speaking in tongues and understanding and interpreting tongues when people are speaking different languages. And all of these things, he has sort all these lists. He's got some in Ephesians and Romans and other places. There are extensive ways that the spirit shows up in every single one of us for the common good. It's only been a few days for me to be serving. I, uh, I didn't just show up today. I did show up on Monday last week. So, so I punched the time clock. The time sheets are in. I've, I've been on the clock for a little bit here. But I showed up on Monday and I have been so excited myself to see the manifestations of the Spirit for the common good that are already going on at St. Matthew's Episcopal Church. Because I can see that we're doing things for the common good when I see the clothing shelter, or the clothing shelter, the clothes closet, and Shine, and the Food Network, and uh, Crispin's house, when I see uh, the uh, gifts going on of education, of music, of uh, growing, the ways in which we build each other up through the Sunday school and growing in our faith together, manifestations of the Spirit given to every single person for the common good. And I have thought, as I was uh, here in my first week, just thinking over and over, my prayer being, God, how good you are to me that you would let me be their pastor. That I could come to a place with such manifestations of the Spirit already active and alive. And I'm so grateful to be able to be here this morning. Because many of you I've known for a long time, You've seen me sometimes in the pews, sometimes we've been uh, working on things outside of here. Some of you, I know, are doing things all over the diocese, that your skills and your gifts lead you outside of this church's wall, again, for the common good, the good of other churches, supporting them in uh, their development and in their finances and in their musical offerings. So many manifestations of the Spirit that I could begin to name And I can't wait to discover all the things that I don't even know about yet. And that's part of the challenge that um, I, there's a little challenge there in what Paul was was writing to the Corinthians. Because he's so proud of their manifestations of the spirit for the common good. Uh, They're all over. He says you've got gifts of healing and, and knowledge and wisdom and insight and tongues and all these things that you do. And part of his challenge to the Corinthians 
was around exactly that. One, he's proud of them for the ways that they are living their Christian lives, that they're walking as disciples. But throughout the letter, he goes on to point out that in the church in Corinth, you know, this, this was a cause of division among them, that uh, Paul even invent, invents a word. He calls them the super apostles, right? Those who are, like, extra good at church. <laughs> They're super good at church. The, you know, the people who have all those great spiritual gifts would kind of separate themselves from the people who, you know, just showed up on Sunday because they aren't quite there yet. Uh, there would be these divisions and spiritual forms of pride that would sneak in among them and, and have the Corinthians telling each other, well, I don't need to be with you and I'm going to go over here with the other super apostles who understand what I'm about. And part of the way that Paul reminds them the way that he starts to undo this, the way that he uh, cracks open on this and cracks open the problem is he uses that sentence to each person is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good, right? It's not just for the super apostles who are real good at church. It's for everybody. And he even goes on to say, as we just heard in that reading, that it is for anyone who can say Jesus is Lord that the Spirit is manifest within Anybody can say that small little phrase. In fact, it's after the sermon uh, in most, in, or outside of COVID times, the next thing that we do would be the Nicene Creed. And we say, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> right? We go and we say a real long version of Jesus is Lord. But we say that because we know that is the manifestation of the spirit that is in each and every single one of us, whether or not we are the super apostle, whether or not we are the the baron and the baroness of the Bible study, or the count and the countess of the clothing closet, or the duke and duchess of the diocese, uh, even if we go out and do all those amazing things, they're wonderful manifestations of the Spirit for the common good, but the Spirit is here in every single one of us when we make that confession of our faith in Him. And so Paul says that he is proud to be the pastor to everyone in Corinth and to be there to serve everyone. Because it is in that act of manifestation, right? That it is not just about the individual spiritual gifts or just about my walk with Jesus or the ways that I have my ministries. Notice all of the I, me, and my in there. But the ways in which the Spirit is manifest in all of us. Because it was that signpost, right, that said manifestation against racism. That kind of thing doesn't work if one person shows up. The salt march didn't work with just Gandhi going. The march on Washington wasn't just one Martin Luther King standing at the microphone with nobody there. It took a movement of people to make those things happen. Those manifestations of the spirit for the common good. And the spirit is given to every single one of us through our faith in him. And so we have our opportunity to be that manifestation in the world, that showing up, that demonstration to say we do understand through our reading of the scriptures, through our experience in the sacraments of a different kind of world, a vision of a different kind of world around us, like those people who wanted a different Montreal, like the people who wanted a different India, a different United States. And we have a vision of a different kind of world that we call the kingdom of God, and we are going to show up for it. And God has given us the showing up of the Holy Spirit for the common good to make it happen. And it all comes through that simple declaration that any of us can make. That Jesus is Lord. If we had the Nicene Creed next, he'd basically be saying it and it'd be done. And so we all have that ability to be a part of the changing of the world through our faith the Spirit, which gives us the gifts and everything, every grace that we need to do it. And this is the faith that is powerful enough to change and to save the world. Amen. Prayers of the people this morning will follow form four, found on page 388 in the Red Book of Common Prayer.
Let us pray for the church and for the world. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Rob, our bishop, and Jason, our priest in charge. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays this week, Joshua DeRocher and Chris Calhoun. Grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loved us. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Walter, Linda, Lisa, Judith Ann, Cletus, and Donnie. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We also pray for those who are homebound or hospitalized or in nursing homes, especially Marilyn, Marjorie, Barbara, Lorette, Sally, and Sue. For all who long for rest or healing, Lord, in your mercy. We, we, we commend to your mercy all who have died. Jeff Bennett, a member of the Simons family. From our book of remembrance, Paula Paradis Poyer, and also Phillips M. Wilkin Freeman, in whose loving memory the altar flowers are given that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you to share a sign of Christ's peace in a COVID-safe manner. Then we, of course, extend that peace to those who are worshiping with us online at this time. Peace to you all. Peace, everyone. Peace. Hey, peace, y'all. I miss seeing you, Lene. Peace, Jason. Welcome Jesus back. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. 
Okay, peace, Jane Doherty. I didn't see you were there. Continue with Eucharistic Prayer A, found on page 361 in your prayer book. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, 
In your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And as we prepare to receive communion sacramentally here in the church, we join our prayers to those who uh, are uh, making their communion spiritually online. Uh, let's say the prayer printed in the bulletin together. Dear God, help me to remember past celebrations of our Eucharistic feast. Reanimate in me the feelings and desires that make this experience a sacred and abiding one. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Turning to the prayer on page 365, let us pray. Eternal God, 
Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as I understand we have some announcements before we conclude our worship service today. Um, since this is my first Sunday here, I'm the worst person to have make the announcements because I don't have a clue what's going on. And I only say that because I have a fiction that on other Sundays I will know what's going on. Uh, so could I turn to our wardens, uh, Dennis and Shay, uh, to bring some announcements for us. Morning. Morning. First of all, thank you so much for joining us. It is so wonderful to have you here. So thank you very much. Um, just some dates that are coming up. Um, one, we are trying to get the Sunday school program back up and running. There are hopes it was going to be this Sunday, but COVID got in the way again. Um, so we're shooting for February is what we're aiming for right now. Um, we'll get more information to you um, as things go on. Um, adult education, and I know I messed this up in the 8 o'clock. Is it Tuesday or Wednesday? Wednesday? Tuesday. 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 I knew I messed it up. Right. So the information is in the parish notes uh, as well as the link to join. Um, so uh, please, um, please join us for adult education. Um, annual meeting is January 30th. It will be up here in the church. It will also be online as well. We'll have people standing by on Zoom to answer questions. Shane and I, I will have our phones on us if anybody needs to call in to ask a question or whatever. Um, but you can attend annual meeting from home as well. Um, January, first, 30th, right? January 30th. January yeah. 30th, yes. So right up here, right after the 10 o'clock service. First week of February is the Vestry Retreat. Um, I invite anybody and everybody, please reach out to Shay and myself. Um, give us ideas or thoughts, um, anything you like about St. Matthew's, where you want to see us going, uh, anything you may want to see change, um, that's something we can bring to the vestry and we can discuss at our retreat that day. Um, speaking of vestry, I'll let you yeah. take over. Uh, so we, I'm going to pause on vestry for a second. We do have some open, um, uh, why can't I think of the word right now? Um, delegates. Delegates, that's the word. Uh, delegate positions open up. We have had some people who volunteer. We'd have to do a full nomination. They'd be delegates to Southern Convocation. They meet monthly. Uh, I'm not sure if they're in person or online right now, but my guess is it's probably hybrid. Uh, makes up a good swath of the southern part of the state of Episcopal churches. Um, the meetings are once a month. It's a great way to get to learn about the Episcopal Church in New Hampshire and, and more broadly. Um, you also will attend uh, the Diocesan Convention on behalf of St. Matthews and be a delegate. That's the first Saturday in November usually. So it's not a huge time commitment. I did it uh, myself. Uh, for a couple years, and I found it extremely helpful uh, and beneficial doing that if I wanted to get to know everybody uh, across the diocese a little bit better. So if you want to do that, let Dennis or I know. Uh, we do have an open um, vestry position as well. Uh, if you're interested in serving on vestry, let, reach out to Dennis and I so we can talk to you about the ins and outs of it. It makes up one meeting a month, um, and then really as much as you want to put into it as well, uh, we're happy to talk to you through all of that. I also want to note, uh, the heat has been on since 7 o'clock this morning, <laughs> I swear, we're doing our best. It was 57 when we started, it's 59 now, so we're heating, we're the, on place our way up. Up. We're heating the place up a bit. So. Come back about 3, we'll be above 60, okay, so, so we promise we're not trying to uh, freeze everybody out. Uh, so, uh, so if you're interested at all uh, in joining Vestry or being a delegate, let us know, um, we can make that happen. Jay? Yes, Jay. to be uh, Bishop uh, Curry, uh, that's a great place to go. So if you want to be a delegate, this could be the year to be a, be a delegate. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, I'm popping into my mind is that tomorrow, of course, is Martin Luther King Day. 
and I am remembering that the uh, typical celebration that happens in Manchester for Martin Luther King Day, it will be happening online this year. It's an uh, online program at 1.30, and everything you need to know to connect is on their website, mlknh.org. So if you want to be a part of that program, mlknh.org at 1.30 tomorrow, and you can take a part in that tradition. Any other announcements that need to be made before we depart? Then we'll open our hymnals and stand for our hymn, uh, number 135, hymn 135. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.